Good evening. I'm Anne-Marie Lipinski. I'm the curator of the Neiman Foundation for Journalism at Harvard, and it is just a great, great pleasure uh, to be able to welcome you all here to Lippmann House for the 32nd annual Joe Alex Morris Memorial Lecture, um, which will be presented tonight by C.J. Uh, Chivers, senior writer for the New York Times. Chris is an author, a blogger, a photographer, a videographer, Marine Corps vet, husband, father of five, and that's just for starters. I look forward to giving him a more proper um, introduction a little later tonight, but um, perhaps I can share with you that when his parents came in, I said to them, you must be so proud of your son, and Mr. Chiver said, he's 48 years old and ought to know better by now. <laughs> So there's that. Um, along with welcoming Chris, um, there are several other guests I would like to give a very special uh, greeting to. Ula Morris Carter, uh, Joe, Joe's widow, who has been such a loyal supporter of this lecture series um, through the years. We are so, so glad to have you back with us um, this year. Welcome. Uh, Dick Stone and his wife, Betty. Um, Dick was Joe's roommate at Harvard. Uh, and knew him long before he began his distinguished career in journalism. And Dick has been very generous with me in sharing his recollections um, of Joe and also in support of this lecture. So welcome to them. Uh, we have several members of the Neiman Advisory Board with us tonight, including the new chair, John Harwood of the New York Times, and welcome to all of them. And we also extend a very, very warm welcome to Chris's wife, uh, Suzanne Keating, who's with us, um, and his parents, uh, Jim, as I mentioned, and his mother, uh, Patricia, as well as his niece, Cara Metcalf. Um, and very importantly, the family of Neiman Fellows, past and present. Um, it, it's just um, great to have you all here tonight. These fellows are bound by many things, primarily their shared commitment to excellence, the sort of excellence exemplified by Chris and the late Joe Morris. Many of you are, in fact, doing the kind of difficult work for which Mr. Morris lost his life. And in hosting this lecture tonight, we also pay tribute to you. At a time when the world is increasingly connected, our need for information about complex developments increasingly important, and our means of communication increasingly rich, it is disheartening that so many US news outlets have retreated from foreign coverage. But in honoring outstanding foreign reporting, as we do each year with this lecture, we're reminded of the important work still being done by some of you and its urgent value in a democracy, something that Joe understood. Joe was a 1949 Harvard graduate and a veteran of World War II. He inherited his passion for international news from his father, who served as foreign editor for United Press International and the New York Herald Tribune. After years spent working as a local reporter for the Minneapolis Tribune and the Hartford Times, Joe Jr. joined United Press in 1950. He left for a short time to work for the Arabian American Oil Company, then rejoined the UP in 1953. It was during those early days in the Middle East that his deep interest in the region was born. Joe developed a distinctive sartorial style, bow tie, basque beret, Dunhill pipe, but he was best known for his intelligence, fearlessness, and a curiosity on the road that propelled him through a series of assignments in Europe and the Middle East um, for UP and the New York Herald Tribune, Newsweek, and finally the Los Angeles Times. He opened a bureau in Beirut for the Times in 1965. Three years later, he was named bureau chief in Bonn, but returned to Beirut in 1975. When the civil war there became too dangerous for his family, he moved to Greece, using his base in Athens to continue reporting on the Middle East. Joe's last assignment came in 1979, when he traveled to Tehran to report on the revolution. While covering fighting outside an Iranian airbase on the outskirts of Tehran, he was shot in the heart. He was 51 years old. In an editorial published in the LA Times two days after his death, some describe Joe as the most experienced American correspondent in the Middle East, but others said he was the best correspondent anywhere. One reason he held that rank, the editorial said, is that he was always there at the front line of wars, revolutions, coups, and upheavals. Those who watched him put his life at hazard in the service of the story were awed by his almost jaunty personal courage. 
He brought to his readers an understanding not only of what was happening, but why, as far as he could discern it. He had a knowledge of the Arab and Muslim worlds rare in American journalism. And he shared that understanding with both his readers and his colleagues. Joe had the best qualities of, professional news, of the professional newspaper man, a quick and sympathetic curiosity about the people, whoever they were he was writing about, a wholly undogmatic view of men, ideas, and events, and the ability to convey his understanding in clear and straightforward prose. Times Foreign Editor Robert Gibson said, Joe never settled for less than the best information regardless of risk or hardship. Ultimately, this determination for quality cost him his life. Joe was proud of his profession. The profession is even more proud of Joe. He set standards for us all. Joe left behind his wife, Ula, and their three daughters, Maria, Karin, and Julia. His family, colleagues, and Harvard classmates established this forum in his memory in 1981. That same year, the Neiman Fellows posthumously awarded him the Louis M. Lyons Award for Conscious and Integrity, with Lyons himself in attendance. On that occasion, Louis said, our Neiman Fellows have made an appropriate award for the work of a newspaper man of notable honesty and courage and skill and unflagging devotion to fact. In honoring the work of Joe Alex Morris Jr., the fellows of this group express their own standard of what is worthy to emulate. Only one who never sought such an award deserves one. Through the years, the Morris Lecture has brought to Harvard such journalistic luminaries as Flora Lewis, Peter Jennings, Ann Garrels, and Dexter Filkins. We are so proud to add Chris Shivers to that roster. Chris will speak with us a little later this evening. In the meantime, please enjoy your dinner and most of all, each other's company. Welcome to Lippmann.